How's that smell? Wow. All right. All right. Yes. All right. All right. The day has come. The long awaited book. It's here. It's oh, here. Wow. We're all so excited is, right now. That it's it so is cool. here. Goodness. A few of us have gotten it. If you guys in the chat, if you've already got it, please let us know. So um, I'm going to unbox mine in just a moment. Keith has already unboxed his. <laughs> this is a special... Oh. This is a special Thursday edition of Halenville Live. We'll be on a little while. Um, yeah, the eagle has landed, baby. With a big thud. This yeah. thing is heavy AF. Whoa. Yes. Right Five, on. How many pages? 580, inc not including the 11-page introduction. Oh, nice. Man. Insane. Mm. Oh, man. All right, we are going to dive so much into that, but let's let's bring in the man of the hour, the one and the only Steve Rosen. Steve, you rock. Right there, Woo. he is. My goodness. My goodness. Steve. Thank you, guys. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Tony. Today's your day, man. It looks like you're in a lightning storm. I know, man. What's going on? I'm the only one. It might be your camera connection. Yeah. I have to tap it. <laughs> Audio sounds tap good. The yeah. There you go. Well. Oh. It, oh. <laughs> Maybe it's a connection. It's good. It's kind of like old I mean, school. I, I never use it. Uh, hang on one sec, guys. He's going to plug it and plug it. But but welcome, everybody. everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Danny, All right. Danny. While Steve is, oh, yeah. While yeah. Steve is doing that, let's recognize everybody in the chat here so far. I see Christopher Live Sour Star at the bottom. Mulligan, yeah. We'll take one. Right on, yeah. Up, sour? On fire. Uh, Dan in New Jersey's here. Wow. Everybody wants some. What's up, Shreddy? Good, yeah, to, see Shreddy. You, Good to see you, guys. Dan of New Jersey. All right. All right. Sandra is in the house and backstage, and Robert Ramford is here. Adam Roach is here. Hey, Adam. See you guys. We'll Howdy. see you Wednesday coming up. Mm -hmm. Tim Thomas is here. Kurt5150 is here. Good to hey, see you dude. guys. Hello, Kurt. All right, I'm going to scroll up still. Brian Bouchard is here. Hey, dude. Nice yeah. to see you, man. Brian, hey, Brian. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for being here. Good to see you. Thank Charmaine you. Taylor. Hey, Charmaine. Hey, Polly man. Walnuts in the house. Dude, oh, brother. Yeah, brother. Right on, Polly. Um, let's see. Still going upward. Susan Pest Yeah, I don't know what all of a sudden happened. Yeah, Susan. Steve's... Glad you could make it. Adam. Dude. All right. Yeah. We got to get right. Susan popping on in, here. Man, they're popping in like crazy. So, yeah, if you're just getting here, please say hello. We are celebrating, hold it up, Keith, the arrival of the yeah. book. Nice. It's here. Oh, my goodness. Nice. I have had such a great week. I got this in today, and then this came in on Monday. <laughs> hey, you got a lot of reading so, to do. Yeah, and I've already been pictures. through that. I've been through that picture book for uh, like 10 times already. Uh, yeah. and, oh my god but this is unbelievable i'm i'm gonna be like reading it like scripture that's awesome dude that Someone is so won't, cool. won't be sleeping for a few days that looks familiar don't it yeah it does oh, let's yeah. let's go that. ahead let's go ahead that. keith and let's dive on into it while we're waiting on steve let me say this first um we hope steve will be back He's working on the video part that just started right as we were going live. He needed earbuds in the green room. Oh, here he is. He's coming back. He's going right, to be cool. all Hang on. right. Yeah, nice. Let's see what he's doing. phone's blowing up over here. <laughs> it is? Who is it? This is big news. 
That's all you all right. Well, <laughs> Steve, are you ready? I'm talking to you right here. Sit him back in here. Chris. Hey, Chris. This is awesome. Taylor Green, hello. Oh, it's there still there, is. but you know what? Steve, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. sir. Loud and clear. Is everybody seeing all this uh, weirdness? Yeah, yeah, it's still mm -hmm. doing that. It seems uh, like your audio weird. is fine, though, Steve. I mean, I, I unplugged the the camera, you know, and yeah, it's got to be the wire. Back in. Yeah, it's got to be the wire. And it's weird because it, it, it just sits oh. back there. Let me, let me try that's, to unplug it again. Okay, hang on. That's getting a little. That's getting a little worse. Yeah, <laughs> you know, audio is good. We could just talk to you. <laughs> I saw someone, you know. Well, I tell you what. Well, well. Um, just put a picture. Of while him. he's yeah. doing that, let's dive into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and turn the. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Or you okay. can just turn his camera off. Yeah, because uh, he he, leaves. he he popped out himself. I, 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 I didn't you, do bro. that. Yeah. All right, Keith. Max headroom. <laughs> nice. Hold that flip, thing up, dude. Flip, flip through that son bitch. <laughs> Look at that thing, man. That's nice too, and that's a real that's a real cover. That's not a paper cover. Yeah. You oh know, yeah. No jacket. That no is jacket awesome. at all. For a yeah, book no that's Steve selling out of the trunk of his car, that's a very high quality book. And, 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 the, and, and look at and that. the back. Look, look at the pants. Check out the pants. Oh my goodness. It's glossy. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah it's got and the back, right Keith. And then you got the spine, which is so cool. That is an absolutely oh, over yep. the top publication. And then here's the back. Dude. Well, yeah, needless to say, that. Keith, you are Tom, Tom and Terry. Your hands, yep. man. That's so you, cool, you got man. Paul Brannigan and, and Brad Tulinski doing commentary on the back. Nice. Wow. And. Yeah. Yeah, man. Look at this. Yeah, man. Yeah, I can't wait for that. that. That's the list of acknowledgments and thank yous. Yeah. And there are actually quite a few of uh, you guys in here. Yes. So yep. so honored, man. Yep. Wow. So I, so. I, did just the fact that, that he mentioned me in this is is beyond re repose. I'm like, wow. So honored. Wow. You know. And uh, wow. you know, we've got to give tip the hat off to uh, to Tea Cake because he's in here. Um, oh yeah. Charles yes. is in here. Brendan's in here. You know, Susan, you're oh. in here as well. Holly's in there. Yeah. Is, 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 is really, is Holly in there too? Holly's in, in there, right? Holly's yeah, Steve. Yes, that Holly. when you, yeah. I think Steve has solved his problem here, fellas. Oh good. He might have to I hold think, the camera. No, I think we're there. Oh good. Let me um. Oh, let me pop out of this, key. Pop out of that right. and bring and him let's in. Let's bring him Come in. 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 Let's see. Steve. Very, well, it's better. It's oh, man. Enough. I'm sorry, guys. I, it, it just makes me insane. It's good enough, I think. Your audio is fabulous. It's there you perfect. go. Wait there. Yeah, don't. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Don't, yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you pointed in the corner, it was good. No, when yeah. it Steve, stops, do you, want, do, do you want some tinfoil for the antenna? <laughs> aim, aim it in the corner, Steve. Yeah. There you go. Right there right you right go. There. And don't touch it. Right there. Don't touch. Uh, <laughs> you might have to hold it the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right uh, there. You know what? That's good enough. I think. Uh, uh, oh, guys, I'm sorry, man. I, I don't. I don't get it. Right. Right. I think when your hand is close to it, it must there be you. like a, a signal type thing. A little staticky. Yeah, almost. Electric. You know I, I think yeah. it's, well, let's maybe do it, this and Yeah, let's see what it does. Maybe it'll sorry. come down over time. It's the all audio good. is fine, yeah, Steve. So we're just getting started talking about this yeah. with you guys. This is this is excitement. Look unbelievably cool. Electric. Ah, so unbelievably awesome. cool. There you go. Right on. So so uh, you, you got the book out, right? Yeah. Let me preface this by saying Steve gave me a homework assignment before this show. And because of all the conversation I've been getting from everybody, I've only gotten to page two of the introduction. Uh, you, you got so, an F. You get an F for homework. My, my sincere apologies. You got to step that up, for this. Yeah, I know. 
Oh, oh my he's got to stop calling me. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. So so there there's more stuff in the book, Keith. Oh, yeah. Do continue. Oh, I, I love this uh, paragraph here, Steve. The truth was Edward did not give a fuck, did not fuck around with vagaries. If there was something on his mind, he'd tell you, and he didn't want to, if he didn't want to return a call, he simply didn't return a call. <laughs> he was unflinchingly honest, and that was not always an easy thing to digest or understand. Even Alex Van Halen would tell me one day, he's never been one to mince words. I mean, when he's pissed off at somebody, he just goes out and says it. His intention was not to hurt, but to merely tell you what he was feeling. If he wanted to go home, he'd say so. If he wanted to borrow $10 or buy a set of guitar strings from a local guitar center, he'd ask. And if he didn't want to call, he wouldn't make apologies for it. You know, that's Eddie in a nutshell, candor incarnate right there. Absolutely. You know, he, that was Edward. Yeah. Steve, the dialogue, the dialogue love it. in your writing is so fresh. It's fresh, man. It's classic Steve Rosen. It's always had its own thing, and it shines right now. I can't wait to get my hands in this book. I got my hands on mine. Yeah, you do. You look right there. there. It's just like you know, <laughs> That's sounds really nice, Charles. Right there. I yeah, appreciate that. Like, like I said, Charles Benning, your book will be there. All good, man. It's all sure. good. It is all sure. good, man. It's so um, great getting to do this with uh, you guys in this community. This is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this, this is one of the most special. I know it's a big moment for you, Steve, the hugest moment. I've been waiting for this moment from you for a couple of decades. However, right now with <laughs> us all getting to participate in this moment, this is priceless. Thank yes, you, Steve. absolutely. Thank you, my God. This is, mm -hmm. this is yes. so cool, man. This is just. I'll really, drink to that. Really nice, priceless. Mm -hmm. Priceless. Mm -hmm. Priceless. Thank you, Steve. Taylor, when you go um, visit your dad, you, you can you can steal it from him, so you don't have to buy it. <laughs> so, Charles, you better put yeah. a lock on that door. Only T. It's only Thursday. Yeah. Uh, well, so while while I to get your own copy, brother. This piece of garbage camera. Um, I heard you guys actually talking about the uh, the physical attributes of the book, and if I may, uh, yeah. I'd like to explain a little bit about it. So originally. Tone Chaser was going to be a six by nine. Um, my printer sagely, and God bless him, said, you can't make this book six by nine. The book will be three inches wide. You know, the print would have to be too small. The photos, you know, uh, just, just wouldn't come through at all. So he suggested seven by 10. Yeah. And I love that idea. Then as time okay. went on, he said, you know what, man? Um, Tone Chaser should be embossed. And I've always loved embossed titles on books, you know. So hence, you know, you rub your finger over Tone Chaser and yeah. wow. you, can, mm -hmm. you can feel it, you know, man. Uh, that to me, I just think is so cool. Yeah, I saw you. I love the sheet that you put on the jeans as well, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, say it again? Uh, the sheen that you put on his uh, jeans on the cover. It's yeah, so yeah, smart. It, exactly. That that's that that's called UV. I mean, some of you guys may know that, and certainly you've seen it in some books. Um, but that again, that was a suggestion from my printer, and I love that idea. So you know, holding the book up to a certain light, uh, you know, you can see it so reflected. So Edward uh, entirely is uh, in UV, you know, down to his shoes, and then uh, the Les Paul uh, is is in UV. Hold your copy so, up, Keith. Let's use, let's use Keith's video there. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you can see the reflection, and that Keith, is, yeah, there, you can see it off the left side. Three dimensional. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So and and cool. then you feel the embossing right across the tone chain. That is so beautiful. cool. Yeah. Exactly. So and if you turn the book, the matte finish. Exactly. And then <laughs> if you turn the book around, you have that photo of Ed and me. And yeah. do you guys have uh, what is kind of well? I don't want to give it away. So that's the, <laughs> hold it up. Don't move it. No, hold it close. But that it's is not, not the, the same picture. photo. You never seen right. that picture. Never. That that picture. I was over at Zlozis before I started writing the book, or maybe when I started writing it, 
I say, Neil, do you maybe have any other photos from the uh, day on the green show? He goes, well, I don't know. So he went through oh, and yeah. got this picture, uh, which is taken right after the first one, the first one, which you've seen a lot. This yeah. one you've never seen. That's um, awesome. I mean, I really love this picture. I mean, he is just, I mean, I mean, you know, he's a, he's a little kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is his first big gig. When I say big gig, you know, it's the first gig away from, uh, you know, sort of opening for, uh, you know, the, doing the Journey Montrose thing. I'm um, so happy. Uh, so you know, happy. so here he's about to go out, you know, and uh, 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 play uh, after ACDC and before Foreigner and uh, Aerosmith um, at Travers. So that was a big day for him, man. And um, though he looks, you know, like he's ready for anything, he was he was pretty nervous that day. And I write about that in the book. Um, this is actually the second time I'd met him. And um, again, I write about it in the book, and I don't I don't want to give it away, but it, it was it was a pretty extraordinary day. Um, uh, he was just amazing. I mean, you know, the thing is, I wanted to watch Van Halen play. I wanted to watch their set that day. So um, uh, ACDC actually opened the show. Um, and uh, then Van, then it was Van Halen. Uh, so I was backstage, and I was waiting for ACDC, ACDC to come off um, and, and for Van Halen to go on so I could, you know, go, go back out in front. I was sort of, it was like a compound out in back where all the band's trailers were. I was, that's where I was kind of hanging out. So I wanted to, you know, wait for Van Halen to go on so I could kind of go out in the front and stand somewhere and watch them. So I was just about to leave the compound, and the publicist for ACDC says, hey, man, you want to interview ACDC? And I was about to say, well, no, not really. I want to go see, AC, I want to go see Van Halen. I didn't say that. But um, they said, well, listen, you know, you want to interview Angus? I said, okay, yeah, sure. So I went and interviewed Angus and uh, missed Van Halen's set. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so I never saw him that day. Wow. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, that's a pretty amazing day. And slows is there. That is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah, it's amazing what you had to give up to do your job. I mean, that was your job, man. So you were just doing what you were supposed to do anyway. You were being responsible. Um, That's what you were doing, Steve. And that's cool, man. I I tried to be, and 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 if the real truth be known, I I I was never an ACDC fan. You know, so that kind of compounded it, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, I mean, it would have been different. Had I, you know, if they said, Hey, you want to come back and interview, uh, well, I don't know, you know, Joe Perry or, you know, Jimi Hendrix or something. But, you know. mm-hmm. It was a funny story about that interviewing Angus. So I'm back there and I interviewed Angus and I hadn't prepared anything because I didn't think I was going to interview ACDC. And honestly, I didn't know a hell of a lot about ACDC. I think only their first album, had come out over here, maybe the first two records. I can't remember. This is 78. Um, so I, I, I don't know what I asked him. You know, why, why do you play SGs or, you know, I don't know. And um, so we're sitting there talking, and this guy comes over. They were, you were, we were sitting at like a picnic table. This guy comes over and jumps up on top of the table. And I write about this in the book. Um, and jumps up on the table, man. He's got a beer in his hand, and he's jumping around, man. He's almost knocking my cassette player over. And I'm looking at Angus, and he's not saying a word. And all the handlers around, they're not doing shit. I'm going, can you get your head off, man? I'm, I'm trying to do an interview with Angus Young. And I was about to say something. I dude, I'm trying to talk to Angus Young here from ACDC. Could you please leave me now? So he jumps off, and he sits next to Angus. And I'm going, what the hell? He goes, I'm, I'm, I'm Bon Scott. You know, I'm going, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> well, I almost uh, insulted Bon Ahoy, Scott. mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That, is, so, that sounds like you. You've to be a very yeah, nice guy. Him. Albeit uh, a pretty drunk one, but very nice guy. Um, <laughs> that's so cool. So, uh, that's yeah, so that was that Dan is. the Green. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. What's up, Boner? So, Good to see you, bro. And Chris Hunter. Hey, dude. Nice to see you. Yeah, man. Right on. Um, Steve, I must say that 
on the package. I'm, I'm not going to show it, but I'm very impressed having not opened it, looking at the return address label oh, as yeah, the image. That, right? has the image of the book on the return I forgot about label. That. Well, yeah. well, well. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah. You know, especially for you guys. Dude, oh, I'm I'm good. dying to yeah. open this thing. Um <laughs> let's open, open this thing. Open it man. Yeah, open it. Man. That's open. Steve, let's I, I have a question for you. Uh did go. you uh this case candy that came with is this uh, for everybody, oh, or did you just send this out to uh, to me? You're, and, and, you're and gonna get me I mean, uh, in trouble here, Keith. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, look at that. All right, kids. I, I, I thought that sorry, bookmark guys. came out really nice. That came out gorgeous. Dun 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 dun. dun. He's yeah. upside down. Um, All the blood's gonna run to his head. T. Turn him on. Turn him the right. Yeah. There you go. I'm trying not to show the dress. <laughs> wow. Right. Uh, wow. Boy. There's nice. more stuff in here. I so I love that you didn't use a jacket and it went right with the embossed cover, Steve. That's such an awesome touch. Mm -hmm. Is know? there oh, anything cool, in the pages that I should be wary about, like a guitar no, it pick? No, should be there or, in a little envelope, Tony. A guitar pick. Or, or that hundred dollars you owe me on page you got ten. Some, a couple of, yeah. couple of strings in there. Watch out. Be careful. Yeah. All right. Let's see. There's more in this envelope. Let me put In answer this down. to your question, Keith, that bookmark and and those postcards really were just for the um, for the pre-orders. Just a little thank you for everybody oh, who wow. came there for all those oh. months. Um, Check this oh. out. Any, anybody who's got a pre-order in, you're gonna love these. It's okay. Phenomenal. Let's start, oh, I goodness. guess, with let's start with the big one. So look at this. Okay. Oh, that's great. Cool. Yep. And on the oh, back. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. Very cool, man. That's awesome. Okay, right on there. Okay. Let's see, there's more. But it goes there. to show that there are advantages to pre orders. There is this. There is. Yes. There is. All right, there's more. I remember the minute you announced this. I was there. Yeah, really? It was like maybe seven o'clock in the morning for me here in San Diego. <laughs> so, and I was on my yeah. phone and I saw that I ordered away nice. immediately. And you were definitely one. one of the first, Keith. Oh, Sweet. I could not wait to get All my right. hands on this. Big news. Big news. Yeah. Okay, and there's this. I, I feel like I'm doing my homework in front of my teacher right now. This is, uh, <laughs> this yeah. is really cool. I like how that card came out. You know, it has kind of a, uh, that's cool. You know Mondrian, the, the kind of the modern art, you know, kind of the modern yep. art thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I just, you know. That's definitely yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, that, that Dutch art. Yeah. All right. So, wow. It's here. Steve. It's here. Thank you so much, so, man. Thank you, dude. This, this is, man. So cool. I I remember us talking about this book back to the summer before, you know, yeah, a couple of years ago. Ed passed. Yeah. Um, to oh to, yeah, you well, yeah, you the, you started bugging me way before I started writing it, and you know I I started it uh, 20, 20, August twenty twenty. Is that right? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Because we, yeah, you were you at, you were asking oh, wow. us, should I write this book? And we're like, yes, before you even finish the sentence. You know, yes. like yeah, yeah, you're writing the book, Steve. Right. Come on, <laughs> come on. Hey, All we right. got to give some credit to his cat. Let me. Yeah, there's yeah. an inscription. Exactly. My cat is uh, Keith. Has an in the thank you inscription page. also. Excellent, excellent. Is there is there going to be a um? A little book tour? Are you going to be going signing anywhere? Or you haven't decided that yet? Let me cut this one. That's an excellent question. Okay. I, I really hope so. I'm okay. trying to put that stuff together now. Um, That'd be great. Uh, That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean. Um, I think it's definitely worth it. Um, people, mean, people will show up in droves. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I, that would be that'd be great. You know, I actually, there's actually a. Uh, a bookstore in the Pasadena 
um, called uh -huh. Rollins, which yeah. it's a pretty famous bookstore. Um, nice. Very cool. Been there for a while. Um, I actually just reached out to them, uh, and they responded. Good. So uh, I'm actually I actually haven't read the email yet, so I'm about to read that. And I was thinking about you know trying to put some uh, signings together at some of the guitar centers. Um, around. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Dude. So. Yeah, there's oh, pl man. plenty of stuff you can do. All kinds of stuff you can do, and just to, to yeah. get it out there. But once people, once people get it, digest it, they're it's going to be all over the internet, and then you'll be like, oh my, oh no, there's going to have to be a second printing, you know, <laughs> and a third, and a fourth. <laughs> yeah. Hey Steve, wow. Steve, once we get a chance wow. to actually read this book, you know, we're going to want to yeah. get you in here. Oh, yeah. um, and and the question that I'm going to ask you first and foremost is. You could have wrote this book 20 years ago. Easily. I was expecting you to. And what's the difference in the fact that you waited as opposed to uh, Let me get rid not of doing it? I'm, I'm so curious as to what the difference is and what you might have turned out 20 years ago. Because I, I personally don't feel it would have been anything quite this special. I don't, And I don't know why I'm saying that. But the timing on this is perfect. It's perfect. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate that, Charles. It's a great question. Um, I've actually thought about that myself. Um, on a on a a simple level, a simple answer is I I think I'm a better writer now. I mean, between then and now, I probably have written hundreds of thousands of other words and, and other interviews, you know, so sure. hopefully the writing sure. itself has gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe had I done it, you know, uh, a year or two after, you know, not hanging with Ed anymore. Nice. I, I, I think, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, I love, I think the color came out really good. I mean, those are just, you know, some of the covers and stuff, but there's some interesting covers. And I, 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 I haven't forgotten your question, Charles. Uh, Tony, can you put that back up? Sure. That's cool, man. The, wow. the player on the bottom, yeah. that is the first uh, interview I did with Ed. That's the first interview I had published, and that's the first interview ever published with Edward. Now, I am not gonna swear by that because Ed may have done some little interview with somebody somewhere for a regional, and I write about this, um, mm -hmm. or some little local newspaper that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. uh, if he did, I never saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jazz Obrecht, who is credited with basically having that first wow. big cover on Ed. Um, this came out about three or four months before Jazz's. Jazz's was in, on the cover of Guitar Player. Mine was in a Japanese magazine. But anyway, and those are the Twilight tapes. And once you get into the book, um, and, ha and Keith, had you read any more, you would have known about the Twilight tapes. But I won't say anything. <laughs> uh, you'll know what the Twilight tapes are and uh, a list of the Ben Halen interviews. But Charles, getting back to your question, um, maybe, maybe, Maybe I would have been too close to it at that point. Maybe I would have, I don't know, man. You're right. It would not have been the same book. I wish I could tell you what would have been different. Look, I mean, what would have been, what would have been nicer is some of these memories that, you know, that were 20 years old when I had to go find them in the netherlands of my brain, mm -hmm. would have certainly been clearer. Mm -hmm. Um, does that mean I, I, I could have written about them more objectively? Um, maybe not. Maybe having yeah, this maybe time to sort of stew on it and, and wait for things to play out. You know, we had right. talked about on a previous show, um, you were waiting for some finality in your relationship and yeah. by his untimely passing, it sort of pushed the envelope and it, it put the ball in your court to do something at that time. Um, it's amazing how this has all worked out. I, 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 this is wonderful, Steve. 
this look at this boy. <laughs> my goodness I, man I, I, I can't I, I can't tell you honestly and I know I say it over and over but hearing this stuff is everything to me because while you're writing a book while you're doing any writing man it's a and I hate to make it sound like I'm in a locked room and you know but it's a lonely experience and certainly writing this because what honestly, am I looking I, at here Steve those are pages <laughs> from a 1978 diary I had and if you look uh, it's hard to see it but at the bottom I think I say I have VH uh, which is the first phone interview I did with him I don't think it's that page. Um, <laughs> they all have reference. There's Eddie. Um, uh, and I somehow found these pages. So I was able to date exactly the date of that first phone interview I did with him. Um, That's so cool. uh, yeah. And I just think that people would, would, you know, dig seeing that stuff. You know, some of the photos are necessarily Van Halen centric, but they're about me and, and my career and what I did and some of my work and, me as this, as the world, as the world's worst photographer. <laughs> yeah, I saw, you know, I saw Jimmy in 68. That's some pictures I took. But come down a little bit lower, Tony. Come down, come down, come down, come down. Lower the yeah. book. Lower. Other way. Oh, sorry. Other, stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's Clapton uh, in 71 with Derek and the Dominoes. And yeah. then that's Richie Blackmore. I was out in the road with Deep Purple. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, down here is a picture of Steve Marriott. I was in Japan with Humble Pie, but wow. I had this uncanny knack to make every guitar player look the same. You couldn't tell who you were looking at. So I thought, oh, that's pretty good. You know, I can shoot anybody and you'll think he's somebody else. But um, um, that's that's the last page of the picture. So so there's four or five. Yeah, and there's not there's not a lot of pictures. Uh, yeah, I think but like eight or ten. Si- it, it wasn't that kind of book. There's there's 66 chapters here and like 580 pages. So you, uh, plus, the plus the 11 page introduction. Plus yeah. the eight pages of uh, photos. Yeah. So, so Charles, uh, you know, Tony, I, I, can I, I, can, I, I think, you know, I did begin the book before Ed's passing. I, I, cause I, met, I began the book August 24th. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ed passed the 6th of October, so of October. Month, yeah. a week or whatever. So I did pass, but, you know, if I say to you I had some, you know, sense, I mean, I'm not even going to go there. That's, that's ridiculous because I don't believe in that stuff. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, and maybe it was because Tony would stop, wouldn't stop nagging me or, you know, it was just something I, I thought, you know, man, I, I've got to do this. Um so yeah, you know why it happened at that time, just a a confluence of things. And and honestly, now that it's done, it's hard to believe that I wrote it. I mean, I know that sounds dumb, but I'll I'll, I'll open it and I'll read and I go, wow, that's that's pretty good. You know, that's that's, <laughs> that's okay. You know, and I mean, it's like. Yeah. I know that sounds weird, but um, it, it it doesn't yeah. though, Steve, because it's it's like you're it's it's almost like you're speaking in tongue, but yeah. through yeah. your mind. So yeah. it's yeah, it, you don't you really kind of kind of detach yourself, and you're writing, and then you look back and you go, yeah, that's what I meant to say. So it's there's there's really no disconnect. It's almost like a right to the page. So I yes. found a section in this book that is so very poignant about how Steve wrote this book, and it's on a. Uh, XI or uh, introduction on 17. Um, and yeah, during the intro, um, and he's talking about uh, how he was going to do the uh, life and times of Edward Van Halen. Okay, and he he goes, When I was writing, when I started writing this book, I realized the shape and design of the two stories really had nothing to do with each other. When I understood that, I was able to move forward with the pages you're now holding. What you'll read here is not a biography, a history, or an exacting chronology. You won't find discussions about tapping, taping, or touring. (laughs) There's no in-depth analysis of album releases or as profound and absolute rewriting of the entire canon of electric guitar playing. What I've written about is uh, all of that before in a series of 
of magazine articles, and moreover, there are dozens of other books already out there focused precisely on those subjects. Rather, I think of this as a memory journal, a chronicle filled with observations, illumination, interpretations. And what the hell does that mean? It means I'm telling you all about what I saw, the observing, shedding of some firsthand light on what I was seeing the illuminating and trying to explain and decipher what I was witnessing, the interpreting, attempting to figure out and write about the calculus of the human equation. And for our purposes, that meant simple friendship between two carbon based life forms was anything but simple. It required a true grasp of the higher math of interpersonal dynamics and a level of understanding, sympathy and self awareness that was far beyond my limited mental faculties. Hell, I could barely add and subtract. Excellent. <laughs> this, Excellent. this says it all right there. You know, this uh, is going to be cool. the inside look of everything. Warts and all, right, Steve? I, I, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. There are warts that you're going to have to peel away here. Um, you know, Charles, maybe that's an answer. Maybe had I done this 20 years ago, maybe I wouldn't have exposed those words. You know, um, yeah, maybe that that's part of it. When I was writing it, I thought, we all know how amazing he is. I say it a thousand times in the book, but for the book to be completely honest, for me to feel that the book was completely honest, uh, you know, the, that, 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 that dark stuff has to be there. Um, and I, I, I reveal it myself as well. Look, I'm not going to say, you know, it, it was, um, you know, uh, sacrificing goats and, you know, mad, uh, you know, craziness. But it was just a was small some, portion, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was the fun stuff. Um, but, you know, there were some, there were some, some dark conversations and it got, you know, it got pretty dark and there were some heavy moments, you know, and I tried to relay that stuff as honestly and precisely as I could. So and I said, you felt, you felt it, you heard his voice, you know, you could see his body language, you know, and how he was holding the guitar. You know, I mean, that's, that's what I want you to walk away from, you know, yeah. um, understanding Steve. Edward a little better than you did before you read the book. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that you waited this extra, what I mean, 20 years, you've definitely matured in the last 20 years. I was going to say you, the you same thing, You say you're Charles. a better writer. Yep. Uh, you were fantastic over the top, top of the mountain writer back in the day. So you're happier with your writing now is how I feel. And the yeah. simple fact that you took the time to wait till now to write this, whether push came to shove or not, you got to think about the stories because the stories would have been the same, but you'd have been telling them from a different place in your life. Yeah. It's, and and you know, I, I always think just my personal thing, I'll just share this with the chat. When I think about Steve and his relationship with Eddie, I always in the back of my mind say to myself, you know, Eddie waited his entire life for Steve to write this book, you guys. <laughs> OK, he was always in the back of his mind saying, you know, is it going to come out, you know, this year? Is it going to come out? And the fact that you waited and didn't come out with it is a personal thing between you and Eddie. It's something that you might not even really actually be able to share with us in total intimacy because it's so personal. And the fact that you wrote this book for all of us, you wrote it for us. This is our book. Priceless, Steve. Priceless. Yeah. I cannot wait to get this book and read it. And, uh, you know, between, and I've, I said it before, and this is truly how I feel, between Brad and Chris's book and this book that you just wrote, New and Old Testament, and you can take your choice, which is which. Uh, Either way, it's scripture. In the Van Halen world. Um, this right. is so special. I, it's, we don't even know how special it is yet. We get to absorb it. This is a this is, this is another very, journey we're going to take. This is really cool, Steve. This is. Let me say say this, cool. Steve. For for me personally, you know, 
seeing this and knowing you a while and and seeing this, I know that this is your life's work. You've written many books and you've been writing your whole life, but um, I'm proud to own this, man. I am proud. We've talked about this. Yeah. Now, this goes way back before Ed passed. Steve was, as a lot of you know, co-hosting on Show Me Your Pick in, in the early days of that show. And in the summer before Ed passed, Steve was missing shows where he was, and he was writing. He got in a routine of however many hours a day, every day, and got in the groove, and off he went. And unfortunately, you know, a few months later, Ed passed, but... You know that that book was still full blast and top down and off and running before that. You know, and we I I remember that summer having a little bout of um, diverticulitis and talking to Steve while I was up I had overnighted at the hospital and. Steve, you got to write this book, man. Yeah. <laughs> got to do it. So, I, I do, here it I have, is. I have a question. Today Steve. is the day. I have, I have a question, and I don't know how you'll how it will come out. But do you think you you would have written it any different if Ed were still alive? That's a great question. I I, I thought about that every single word I put down on paper. Yeah. <sighs> So let me let me answer it this way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think I probably said it before. Uh, you know, I, I knew Ed up until 2003. Mm -hmm. and I write about that in the book. So everything being the same, that our relationship ended in 2003, would I have written it, the same book? I would love to say it would have essentially been the same book but I don't think it would have been. I think I would have smoothed over some of those edges. To be honest. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that so you could. I don't. Yeah, I don't know now, that man. you that you could really answer it. It's really hard to answer. Mm -hmm. But you know, because yeah, hindsight. You know, I mean, I. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brent. Oh no, no, I was just saying. Yeah, hindsight. You don't know because small print. In the moment. I in the moment, you glasses. just. In the moment, you just don't know. But yeah, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Yeah, no. and and you know. I also thought uh, the other part of me while I was writing it was, you know, if the book came out, you know, you know, at some point when Ed was still here, you know, I, I what kept going through my head was, and if it was this book that you have, let's assume that, um, would he have been happy with the book? Um, would he have hated the book? Um, and I, I also write about this, and I'll give a little bit away. Honestly, I don't think Ed would have ever have. He wouldn't have read it. There's no way Ed would have sat down and read that book. <laughs> and I write about this. I don't think Ed ever read anything I ever wrote about him. Any of the interviews. Um, I don't even know if he. I don't even know if he knew they came out. I mean, yeah, I think I one time I showed him a copy, a cover of one of the Guitar World stories, and he kind of looked at it, and it just didn't mean anything to him, you know? So, yeah. so you know, would he have read that entire book? I, I, I think that's an impossibility. Um, would people around him have read it and said, Ed, you know, he said, <laughs> smoke a lot of cigarettes, you know? <laughs> he have gotten on the phone, you know, eight years after not talking to me, he said, you fucker, what do you mean? <laughs> a lot of cigarettes. Or, yeah, man, you're right, I smoke a shitload of cigarettes, you know, um, or, or he wouldn't have uh, reacted either way. But I mean, I thought about that a lot. And, and to be honest, I mean, um, I think if Ed were here and he read the book, I don't think there's one misplaced, uh, not word, but I don't think I, I reinterpreted anything um, that, that made something look nicer or worse than it was. Uh, so, I mean, I think he, 
he may not have a reaction to it, but I, I, I don't think he could say, that's not true, that's not true, that didn't happen. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and I, I love what you put in the uh, ending here, Steve, uh, about uh, your dedication to Ed. Let me read this. Uh, finally to Edward, I reach out into the distance and say thank you for finding a place in your life for me. If you were here, I know you'd dig the book. Or truthfully, you probably wouldn't even read it, and that would be all right. <laughs> but because one more hug are all the words I'd ever need to write. That, that was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't no, want to be you. mocked. No, thank you. Night, but, you know. Um, yeah, it's you know, it's it's great. It's he he may have called Joe and said, "Steve, I'm gonna come over there and kick your ass," <laughs> but maybe and, and maybe hey, he would have, you know what? Maybe it would have, uh, you know, rekindled the friendship. You you don't know. Exactly you really don't. Right. You really don't know. Exactly. So, and and but, you know, yeah. Honestly, I don't know if I took. And again, it's hindsight. You know, is twenty twenty. Yeah. Would it have been easier had the book come out when he was alive than after he had passed? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, there's a part of me that wish it really had come out while he was still here, true. even if he just, even if he hated it, like to know that you know somewhere in his head he would think, "Wow, this guy still went ahead and wrote that book." You know, that, you know. But it, yeah, I, I I, but it's it, it's not false. It's it's all true stuff. And San Sandra had a question. It's, Sandra had a question in there. Said, "How many times did you break down during writing it?" Um, that's a good question. And there were a few. There were a few, and really, it was it was listening to to the cassettes. Right. You know, mm. my cassettes were you know, the raw material, yeah. and so I tried to arrange that stuff chronologically. And, uh, that's an excellent question, Susan. Um, if I knew where to send one, I would. So if anybody has a direct line to him, I, I'd love to send him one. Yeah, um, hang on. Audio I'll, version? I'll, hang on a second. I'll... I'm hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> text um, right now. Send it to 5150. <laughs> yeah, he, he's in the studio right now. So send I'm, one sure right he, there. I'm sure someone will address. find a way to get him one. If you, you watch find him, a way to get him I'll, one. I'll call you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um great man uh, oh, good. yeah uh what was i talking about um oh yeah yeah listening to the listening to the interviews i mean there'll be these certain moments and again uh, a lot of this stuff occurred well occurred all the time but but primarily on these twilight tapes which weren't interviews it was ed just calling very late at night right. hence the title twilight tapes which yeah. you would know, Keith, if you read any more of the fucking introduction. <laughs> I got to the I got to the Twilight tapes, and that's, that's where everybody okay. started calling. I'm yeah. sorry. All right. Hey, Keith, you had one guys. job. Keith, you had one <laughs> job. Them, so, uh, time out, man. <laughs> you know, so there'd be these moments, and Ed would start, you know, talking about stuff, and it's like it was heavy. And I listened to that stuff, and I go, "Oh my God, he he hurt so much," you know, and yeah. it's like say something to you know say something right i listened to things i said to him and trying to you know and so yeah those those are pretty hard moments and actually when the book was done um it felt like yeah i was you lived relived a lot of those that was, that was, emotions and moments yeah, yeah yeah that was hard you know i mean he was you know i always like to say that if Ed had been a guitar player in some band called Van Halen, but it wasn't the Van Halen that we know, and they played the whiskey and they, you know, they played Starwood and you know, they were like a local band and stuff, you know. In other words, if Ed wasn't who he was and we had met, I would like to think we still would have had a connection. There was something there, you know. Um, I, I don't think the connection came because I was a music journalist and he was the world's best guitar player. Certainly that didn't hurt. I mean, I suppose if I had been a, you know, worked in a bank or something, you know, maybe that <laughs> a little f farther apart, but um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Um, I'd like to think that that was part of it. And... Um, no, you guys had a real friendship. You know, the vibe I got, I was fortunate enough to see you young and uh, you're the same guy as you were then. You just don't look quite the same. But 
in the club, when Eddie would come looking for you, people would talk. They'd be like, hey, Eddie's looking for Steve. It happened a couple of times. When you would come in looking for Eddie, or you would be waiting downstairs at one of the tables for Eddie to show up. The way people oh talked, God. the way that people talked about your friendship with Eddie. Back when you had some good hair, Steve. Dude, dude, it yeah. it was extra special because I didn't know you. I didn't know this. I just I'm just telling you a story about a guy named Steve Rosen who was a friend with Eddie Van Halen and all my friends knew it. Everyone in the clubs that I hung out with on the strip knew it. It was known. And so it was you, cool. You could have gotten the back door to whiskey every night. He was your you never knew it. I never stopped Steve from getting into the backstage ever. <laughs> Not ever, ever. But God, I, I I you know, I said go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I I I I, I God, I wish I had memories of that, Charles. I mean, honestly, if I had thought about it more, I would have I I, I, I I, I would have used some of it for the book, but because I, I, I just I can't remember, I just can't remember any of it. Honestly, I write about that night meeting Edward, and that that was a hard one. I mean, it, it was easy to remember yeah. at night. It was hard to remember details. I remembered a lot of them, yeah. but um, yeah, sure. yeah, I mean, some of those moments. I mean, those are those moments. God, I, I just wish I had some memory of those men. I what I see. Michelle, uh, Michelle what coming a, out of the box office and uh, Charlie one time was standing there with me and, and he literally said to Michelle, he said, Steve was just here looking for Edward. And she says, I know. I said hello to Steve. I remember that. I remember <laughs> that little interaction with Charlie and, and Michelle talking about you. Um, That's unbelievable. Steve, I, Steve, goodness, man. let me ask you a question from the chat. Um, Holly wants to know, will there be an audio book eventually? You know, I thought about that. And, and so I'm trying to think. So typically an audio book is done, uh, you know, around a novel, right? So there's one person reading the novel. But in, in the book here, there are many voices. So, Which leads me, I, I was going to show you. I'm glancing through and I see a lot of examples where there are, in fact, you know, different. Well, yeah, I mean, there's that's the that's the night, you know, I, I introduced Ed to Les Paul. So for, for that chapter, you have to have somebody doing Les Paul, somebody doing Ed, somebody doing me. But, I mean, typically through the book, it's me and Ed. So do you have like two different people or one guy with different voices? And the other thing, it would take somebody, I, I, I mean, I don't know how long it would take somebody to read the text audio without screwing up. I mean, you know what I mean? It just seems like it would take somebody months. That's a long book. Yeah. It takes a while. It two. takes, it'll take anywhere from... A lot of seven talking. to ten days of eight hour days of reading because I, I i did some audiobook wow. courses it's a long thing and for something like that steve though mm -hmm. you'd probably read it yourself the author would usually reads as like a autobiography type thing but so you could either either read it yourself or someone would be reading it in the third person so i don't you know you wouldn't really have to do all the characters if you didn't want to but but yeah it takes a good a good 10 11 days to do something like that yeah. Of, the of way you energy. tell stories is awesome, though, right. Steve. Yeah, I'll so, just put that out, and all of us agree. So, yeah, your so that, voice put would it be in your pocket. So, yeah, yeah your voice I mean, needs to be honest, Steve. Yeah, that would yeah. be a really good connection. I think that would be oh, it's, cool. it's hard. It's hard work, but I think you could definitely do it. I really yeah, do. I mean, I, I mean, the, 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 the technical aspect of it, yeah, you know, getting a good microphone, and, and I mean, that that's simple. I have a bunch of buddies that do that, right? But it's funny. Along these lines, I, I was sort of, uh, I, I talked earlier about maybe um, uh, trying to do some signings at Guitar Center, because obviously mm -hmm. it's a connection. There. There's a chapter in the book called No Strings Attached, um, which is one of my favorite chapters, one of the favorite days I ever spent with him, when Edward Van Halen was out of Guitar Center. Mm. 
Mm. What do we do? <laughs> so I, I thought, well, you know, if I do the thing at Guitar Center, I thought I would read the chapter. It's a very short chapter. I think it's like three pages. Mm -hmm. So I just picked up the book and I started reading it. And the first line, I don't have the book open, but um, uh, the line was, um, show us your it was a particularly peculiar, I go, particularly, particularly, so I'm thinking, at that moment, I realized the book is meant to be read and not to be <laughs> open in, in answer to you. But um, yeah, I, honestly, I would, I would love to read the book. I, I, I I think, I think you can do it. I think you can. Audio books are becoming quite popular. They are. Re reach out to your your recording <laughs> friends there, Steve, because uh, honestly, that they could help you in a big way, and I think you could probably do it. It may take a little more than a little longer than you would think, but I think the end product yeah, yeah, would be uh, awesome. It'd be awesome. Yeah, man. I I think you say like ten or eleven days. Yeah, something like that. I, if you I'll read, you, yeah. If you could you do could, eight hours a day, I don't think I'd be capable of it. No, I mean, you it's, know, so I, honestly, not, I, probably, I think it take it take three weeks. You know, working yeah, but, hours a day. But again, there's no real deadline for that. You know, some of the other, no, no. some of these other books have deadlines. If you're doing it yourself, you have no deadline. You know? Yeah. Really, really, because it's I out thought, now. And then I thought, you know, well, who could I get to read? You know, who would look out? You know, and I was thinking uh, Morgan Freeman. You know, he's got. Go. You know, though he probably doesn't have a clue who Van Halen was. Um, and then I thought, what about David Lee Roth reading it? How unbelievable would that be? Oh, that'd be However, oh, wow. Ed, uh, Ed um, talks about Dave. I don't want to give it away. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but kind of Ed weird also, hearing... yeah. also, when you when you when you read exactly, okay, so but also Ed talks about Dave and. Uh, he balances that and he explains why he has those feelings about uh, Dave. But yeah, it was just hey, a Hey, Tommy. No. Sure. Tommy, it's good to see you, brother. Love you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steve, Ben, Tom, you know, Tommy, he's in the chat and he made a statement. He said, Steve Rosen, if you don't do an audio book, he says, I got to be on. He'll be a little sad. <laughs> we'll all be sad. Uh, we love audio well, books. You know, so, it's a, you know. I, I've really thought about it. Um, and the other thing I think I've maybe mentioned is, uh, for want of a better description, an enhanced audio book. So it yeah. wouldn't be um, me or somebody reading the entire text, but uh, maybe some of the text gets read, but when it comes to that an interview I did with Ed, the 1984 interview I did with Ed, what you'll you'll hear is you will hear excerpts hear interviews. Yeah. That's you'll hear exactly. excerpts from the Twilight tapes, which exactly. will yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a little different. But, it can be a little different like that. Yeah, so I, mm. I've been thinking about that. Um, yeah, so uh, very cool. We shall see if I can uh, get all these cool. books mailed out and. Keith, show, show us um, your end script, and I'll spotlight you here. How's that? You're muted, dude. His audio's out. Yeah, Sorry. Mute. <laughs> mute. Gotcha. He, he yeah, wrote it in green strong. sharpie. <laughs> There we go. Right on. So what, what it says is, dear Keith, you will always have my back. I'll never forget that. Tonefully, Stephen Rosen. Tonefully. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. Love it. So right awesome. on. Very cool. Very and awesome. You, you actually got one of the rare. I didn't do many in that green pen. I think you got one, Tony, because I realized it. Yeah. it I'm sorry, guys. It bled through a little bit. On the back just of the page, on the but there's nice nothing plan. on the other side. The, no, it's cool. Uh, it's cool. Sorry about that. A little yeah, bit through, nothing cool. bad. Uh, sorry, man. That's it's awesome. It. Hey, I have got it's no awesome. complaints about it. It's awesome. <laughs> right on, man. I am so yeah, glad I love to have all this. the pictures that you put in here as well. Cool. You know, cool. Getting together with Lawrence was the best, smartest thing. 
Ha is there anybody in the chat who's also gotten theirs yet? Please let us know. Um, because if I was watching, I ain't gotten mine. I... And and the wild I thing about this is, I mean, I I got this today. I got this on Monday. They weigh the same, and this thing is so much is bigger. Wow. They really it's weigh the same. Yeah, yeah, they're the same weight. It's an unbelievable. Whew. Yeah, Ed's, Ed's book is uh, amazing. I, I saw it before he put it together. All, all these photos that you've never seen, and I actually yeah. tried to pick photos. That one, and there's a, a little another black and white inside. Well, that one certainly no one has. Um, but that cover photo, uh, you, you, you've probably seen shots from that session, but you've never seen that photo. And I tried to make sure that um, you know Zlo's wasn't going to use it in his book. Um, also, what I love is yeah, how you start every page on each chapter like that. Every, every page has that shadow mean, of him on, on the opening uh, chapter. You mean, you mean the, the little silhouette? The silhouette of Eddie on, on, um, on the first page of each chapter. So great. And that, yeah. that, uh, that credit goes to uh, Daniel Gray, who art directed the book and basically took the text and put it into shape. He also did uh, Neil's book. Um, yes. That was absolutely Daniel's idea. I, I, I love the idea. It's fantastic. Um, uh, and Simon was just here. Simon, your book's coming, buddy. Hang on. <laughs> He's a little farther away, so just hold on. It's It'll tough get getting there. stuff to the other side of the world, guys. Let's just It'll put it there. out there. Yep. Exactly. That's yeah, okay. Steve, I am, I am going to immerse myself in this from now through the weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be busy. Oh, cool. Weekend? <laughs> this Dude, is going to be uh, I, I 66 normally, days of soaking in. I can dive in a book if I want to, but this is this is almost, this is 580 pages, 66 chapters, and small print. Yeah, this, <laughs> I'm glad it is, Steve. I'm honored to have this, so. Yeah, oh, I know what this means to to you, sir. I, I know what this means to to us. Um, yeah, this us is a lot fans. Of work, yeah, this is, and um, I haven't Immense. read any of this <laughs> yet, but um, yeah, I am so looking forward to it. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. Chapter thirty-eight. Oh, cool. Ed and Les, Guitar Busters. Oh, can't, yeah. can't wait to read that one. Yeah, um, that was a fun night. And then you'll so, read what happens in the next chapter. Oh, World uh, War Three. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I referenced the Les Paul. Oh, no, Foreign Objects in the next chapter. Foreign Objects. Um, yeah, then World War Three. So, so Steve, in, uh, yeah. Where can we get this book at? I'm on post. Okay, links guys. So, in this. So you, um, this is really the premiere of the book. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to put uh, some notes up, notices up tomorrow, and I have the book. The book has arrived. <clears throat> if you order, um, you know your book will be shipped out in a timely fashion certainly under eight months. Um, uh, but you can, at, at this point, you can only still get it through me, um, uh, through PayPal, um, you know, and the, the, the PayPal link is called uh, paypalme.tonechaser, Tone Chaser with a capital T, or you can send it to scrosen at sbcglobal.net. Um, the book is forty-seven dollars, including shipping. Include your address, or I'm not going to send you a book, and I'm not going to attempt to find you, people. <laughs> yes, yeah, you, 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 you got to do some work. The There's a, little, a note department in your transaction stuff that you can type a note. Leave. Don't forget your address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, should, I suppose I should do that. And the other thing is, please 
at this point, try to send stuff, family and friends. And that's a specific way you have to send a payment. You, you, you don't just write family and friends in your note. You have to click on the link um, because eBay, eBay, uh, PayPal charges me money. It's free for you. And um, so please, uh, if you could do that. But uh, yeah, look tomorrow for the notices. I'll try to get some notices up. And uh, yeah. So, awesome. So, yeah, so, and so, international fans. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me a yeah. shout. Mm -hmm. Give me a shout, and I can give you the, um, sort of the individual fees for typically it's been Canada, Europe, uh, Australia, and Japan. I did have one from uh, Shanghai. Nice. Cool. Nice. So, uh, nice. yeah. Um, wow. So, get guys, yours. thank you for having Get yours. We'll have those links in the description at show's Too cool. end. Too cool. We saw this in our mailboxes today, and, yeah, pretty good reason. Yeah, I'm really – to go live i can't believe yeah. how quickly your your book got there tony i mean i i started sending the books out yeah. uh today's thursday yeah. yeah tuesday how could the I book i mean i i send out guitar picks all the time you know and they and that that's first class they never would have gotten over that across country like that cross country in, in two days because yeah, media silly. typically is, yeah, is a door. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, post office bill set up. Rosen's book. That's Rosen right. The, top of the bus yeah. here. Uh, yeah. Got to get that. So, out. so, so this means anything that I buy or anyone else buys from from your memorabilia site will get it in two days, right? Uh, excuse me, I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, you get it in two days. Five but you also pay twice as, fast. You pay twice as much. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. this is <laughs> That's great. place your order if you haven't already. You're going to hear a lot about this. Steve is going to put it on his oh, stuff yeah. starting tomorrow, he's saying. So you'll see it yeah. out there. I'm going to read it. I'm going to see how far I can get. Um, we'll be talking about it. For sure. I'm talking about it for a while. Tony, yes. can I also uh, uh, tell everybody one other thing here? Chapter 66, Van Halen's Voices. This is all oh. interviews and commentary from everybody who was around him and in his life. Starts off with a, a description from, from Steve. Then it goes from there to Ozzy, Rudy Learon, Lynn Ellsworth, Truman Rex Fisher, which is Doc Fisher. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, worked at Rudy, Ro Rudy, Rudy Lear. I'm sorry. That's what you said. Yeah, yeah. No, Rudy. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, Rudy. Rudy. Go ahead. Yeah. Lynn, yeah. Lynn Ellsworth, uh, Doc Fisher, who was uh, his music teacher at uh, PCC, Kevin Hill, who was with the Broken Combs, Dave Manichetti from YNT, mm -hmm. Tim Bogart. YNT played the night Van Halen was signed at. Uh, Oh, you guys wow. Kim Fowley. Got Tim. Uh, Bill Gazzari. Terry Kilgore. All these, all those guys are gone. Terry was really interesting. You know, Terry was the other guitar player in Pasadena, um, and he has some yeah. really cool insights about it. I'm, I'm sorry, he played with David Lee yeah. Roth. Yeah. Dee Dee Keel, uh, who is uh, who was a waitress at the Whiskey, and now she's married to Ron Keel. Uh, Carl Sandoval. Charles, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Keith. Charles, did you know her? Say her name again. D D D Keel. D D. Did you say D D? D D. Really? D D married Keel? Ron Keel? Yeah, she she was married to Ron Keel. I don't know if she. I don't know if she. If it's the same D D. Good for her. She was when I interviewed her. But you knew her. Good for her. That's awesome. That is awesome. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. That is uh, crazy. We got Carl Sandoval, Jimmy wow. Page, Alex Van Halen, Michael Anthony, and it closes out with David Lee Roth. Wow. And then you've got the epilogue. Wow. Nice. And those were all interviews, actually, except for um, 
Ozzy wasn't specifically done for the book, and uh, Page wasn't specifically done for the book. They talked about Ed, and I thought it was with him. And Ed. But yeah. all those other interviews were the interviews I was gathering for the life and times of Edward Brooke. And I, mm. that little intro for that section, I talk about uh, why I wanted to include those. Um, let me uh, in this book. Let me ask you, Steve. Um, do you mind if Keith reads this very last page? Oh, the acknowledgement page. He was reading you mean all, this. All the thank yous. He yeah. was reading this backstage. Yeah, how you close things out here. Give them well, a little okay, bit of me, a tease, with your permission. I need, to I need to preface that section first. Um, look, everybody who pre-ordered this book deserves to be uh, uh, in that thank you section. Everybody who ever sent me a letter when I wrote uh, the story, the interviews with Ed back at the Guitar World, deserved it. I, I mean, I've always said the reader is incredibly incredibly important i i think about the reader constantly mm -hmm. i don't know if other writers do i mean certainly a writer writing a book on uh, the civil war you know uh, isn't going to think his reader is uh, you know five years old or something but i mean i try to i try to put my head in the place where the reader is i tried to do that in my writing those magazine articles and what do they want to read and how do they want to read it? And anyway, the reader has always been important to me. So there, are, what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of people I could have put uh, on that thank you page. Um, and I said, if I missed anybody, and you know you should have been here, apologies, you know, I'm still thinking about you. Um, uh, I mean, there's a lot of names to read, Tony. I think that's... Uh, well, maybe I mean, not necessarily that, but just... Uh the the after the the names and you know oh um uh yeah you can read that UCLA you yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I love this though uh you, you were thanking uh the Los Angeles Free Press UCLA for fucking with my head <laughs> UCLA English teacher for being a fuckhead <laughs> And then uh, a couple other names. And then, uh, like, you, like you said, to everybody who bought the book, I pass along my sincerest appreciation. To anybody whose name I neglected to include, I pass along my sincerest apologies. You know who you are. And then finally to Edward. I reach out into the distance and say thank you for finding a place in your life for me. If you were over here, I know you'd dig the book. Or... More truthfully, you probably wouldn't even read it, and that would be all right. Because one more hug are all the words I'd ever need to write. That's that's so beautiful. Yeah, that's you know? awesome. it's, that can't be quoted enough. Yeah, that's great, Andy. Yeah. yeah that is cool. Right on. Well, thank you, guys. Well, why don't we yeah. uh, why don't we close it there? Feels like a good place to, to end it. Mm -hmm. And um, sure. we'll do this again only when. Keith has read past page three. <laughs> oh. The rest of you have, uh, yeah. the rest of you have read all other six thousand eight hundred and forty pages of it. All right, Stephen, I'm putting on a fresh pot of coffee tonight. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm, thank I'm you, Steve. I'm gonna be halfway through this. <laughs> thank you. Just right thank on. You. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much, man. Hang <laughs> out backstage a moment. Um, I want to say thanks to everybody. This has arrived. Yours will be on your doorstep if you've ordered it. Links will be in the description. You can get yours. This is what you want. Yes, it is. Buy the book. That guy right there. Absolutely. Steve, thank you so much for Thanks, this guys. book. We appreciate this book more than we can say haven't even cracked it yet i know this is your life's work um thank you for being here tonight to to share this moment with us and everyone who's getting their book also um 
were excited to read it, excited to have it, and um, yeah, we are. Well, cool. Well, thank you guys. I, I couldn't think of any. Uh, hey, Andrew. Any other people I'd uh, you know I'd want to share this with, and you know, you guys, like I said, have always been there for me, and I, I don't forget that stuff. I never forget that stuff. So thank you. Read the book. I hope you. I hope you are moved by it and touched by it and um, have some good questions for me next time we meet. All right. Yes. Yeah, and we will, that, Steve. we'll have Steve right. back and, and we'll talk after we've all read it. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, we'll have Steve back. Steve, thank you so much. Everybody, happy Thursday. Thanks, um, yeah. Hope your weekend is going to go swell. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Hey, guys. We're out of here. <laughs>